What's up Average Dad fans, welcome back to another video and yes, it's an Xfold 3 video but it's the one you've been asking for. Constantly in the comments I get asked which is better, the Xfold 3 or the Honor Magic V2? Well, having owned four Honor Magic V2s, maybe five, and every Xfold variant out, I am the best placed person to tell you which is best. So without further ado, let's put these two bad boys to the test. Now for those that are new to the channel, I am the Average Dad and I review tech from all across the globe, particularly smartphones with Chinese ROMs, foldable devices, all that good stuff. My mission is to be as big as Benj Gadget Reviews and Mr. Mobile. Pipe dreams I know, but we've got to aim big. And today, I am pitting two of the best and the two thinnest mobile phones together. The Honor Magic V2 has been out for roughly 10 months when you include the Chinese version, and the Vivo X Fold 3 has been out about 10 days. So how today's video will work, like my full reviews, there will be five categories. Build quality, design, software, cameras, and price. I will not be scoring them, I do that in a full review. Stay tuned to the channel and subscribe for the full X Fold 3 review. But what I will be doing is just pitting them against each other in each category, and for each category I will declare a winner. As there's five categories, goes without saying, we should have an overall winner. So without further ado, the first category, build quality. Now the awkward thing about Chinese foldable phones are content and specifications on them can be slightly dicey. So for build quality, you're mostly going to have to take my experience. However, I can tell you that both devices have a glass front and a glass back, or you can get the vegan leather back on the V2. I can also tell you that the hinges are different. It's titanium alloy on the V2 and it's carbon fibre on the X Fold 3. Both of these devices feel super sturdy in the hand, not like old foldables where you feel like the screen's going to crack at any second. No, there's ultra thin glass on both and the feel on the hand feels like glass rather than that rubbery feeling you get in the Samsung Z Fold lineup. Now as far as what the front glass and inner glass is, there's no corning Gorilla Glass, it's Honor and Vivo's own proprietary shield. So again, build quality wise, they feel great and I have had zero issues with any of my Honor Magic V2s and obviously it's only a week old so the X-Fold 3 has been totally fine. So I'm going to talk about the dimensions in the design category. So for build quality, I can't honestly separate either. They both feel as good as each other. So it's a draw for build quality. Now, to one of the more subjective rounds, shall we say, design. Yes, both of these phones are incredibly thin. 10.2 millimeters for the Vivo, 9.9 millimeters for the Honor. As far as all of the other specs and dimensions, I'll dig into that a bit deeper in the video, but design wise, it's really subjective. To me, I like a circular camera bump in the middle of the rear. The Honor has gone for the left hand side orientation in a rectangle format. Still looks good, but I prefer the look of the Vivo X Fold 3 on the rear. And because there is only 0.3 millimeters in the phones, I would be splitting hairs if I thought design-wise one was better than the other, especially when you consider in that extra 0.3 millimeters, which is nothing, Vivo have managed to pack in a 5,500 milliamp hour battery, 10% bigger than the V2, an 8.03 inch screen on the outer, 
0.1 inch bigger than the V2. A 6.5 inch screen and outer, 0.1 inch bigger than the V2. So for that tiny 0.3 millimeters of difference in size, I would take the X Fold 3. And let's be honest, that white color on the X Fold 3, stunning. So for design, my opinion, the Vivo X Fold 3 takes the point. But the V2 is not a bad looking device by any means. And as I mentioned some hardware aspects with the display, let's just talk about that for a second. Both displays are great, large, there's two on each phone. But again, the Vivo X Fold 3 has a brighter and sharper display on both the outer and inner. Four and a half thousand nits on the screen compared to two and a half thousand on the Honor and only 1600 nits on the inner screen of the Honor. Resolution wise, very close, but again, the Vivo X Fold 3 just pips it, keeping in mind that these are also bigger displays on the outer and inner. Yeah, as you can see here, both look great, but the Vivo definitely takes the edge here. And as far as consuming content, if you don't have Bluetooth headphones, here's how the speakers sound on both. And spoiler, again, Vivo just edges it. Now to one of the more confusing rounds, software. I say confusing because if both of these phones were global, there would only be one winner, and that would be the X Fold 3. Origin OS is far superior to Magic OS. No debate, I'm not having any of it, you can put any comments you like, but until you've experienced both, shh. Origin OS, from its stock kits, to its multitasking, to its features, customization, it's just smooth. The dynamic effects you can change, the chart, everything's customizable. But the phone itself, you know, with the 120Hz screens on both, just runs super smooth, animations, speedy, everything just works really, really well. Whereas on the Honor, while... It does work, it's certainly not as smooth, and it's definitely not as polished as Origin OS. There are so many examples in Magic OS where things just seem unfinished. The camera app is so basic, it's disturbing. Unlike the Vivo where you've got all the Zeiss styles and the normal default styles, I don't know. I just think user interface wise, the Vivo takes the crown quite easily. If it wasn't for Samsung's One UI, Origin OS would be my favorite skin. But unfortunately, that's where the Vivo's advantage stops because it's not a global release. The Honor Magic V2, while way too blinking late, did eventually come globally. And that brought with it smartwatch connectivity, Android Auto, Google Pay, and many other smooth features that 
Chinese ROMs struggle with. Now, to be clear, if you do enough digging and jailbreak your phone and all that stuff, I believe you can get all the features on your Vivo X43, including Android Auto and smartwatch connectivity. But I am not willing to do any surgery on my phone to enable that. So with the Chinese ROM, with the Vivo X Fold 3, you are not going to get Android Auto or smartwatch connectivity. I did get Google Pay on my X Fold 1. I didn't on the 2. I thought I had it on the 3 because I added my card in the Google Pay app. But then I went to the shop and it just came up an error message. And that's one of the slight downfalls of the Chinese ROM. For calls and messages and social media and content and 90% of things you want to do on your phone, it's fine. But there is just always that slight unnerving feeling that something might not work, like Google Pay. Or if you're used to Wi-Fi calling, oh, it's not going to work. If you like eSIM, that's not going to work either. While I'm telling you about all the drawbacks of the Chinese ROM, please, if you're about to purchase one, go to Wanda Mobile, purchase through my link, and I get 10 bucks. And if you pay by bank transfer, you get 3.8% off. But seriously, there are drawbacks to a Chinese ROM. In every single video I create, I tell you that. Because I have to be honest. It would be in my best interest to skip over all the drawbacks because I would get more purchases. But that's not what I'm for. I'm for giving you the best purchasing decisions. And software-wise, while the skin of Origin OS is better, the fact that the Honor Magic V2 is global gives it the point. And just to compound things even more, technically a bit of hardware here, but I'll include it in the software and internals category, a pen. The Honor Magic V2 has stylus support, not just on the inner, but on the outer screen. The Vivo doesn't. To the best of my knowledge, I have tried every pen going, none of them work. There's also nothing in the settings menu that would insinuate that there's any pen support. Hopefully I'm proven wrong, because that would be a nice feature, but no. The Honor definitely has pen support, I've used it many times, and it works great. The other aspect, I've mentioned it already, the battery. The V2 has a 5000 mAh battery, the v X Fold 3, I keep wanting to call it the V3, the X Fold 3 has a 5,500 mAh battery. Now I have used the phone for five or six days now, and I do feel confident enough to say that the X Fold 3 has better battery life. By about, funnily enough, 10%. I'm getting, I'd say around an hour a day more than what I did on my V2. But that's to be expected because it's the same chip with a bigger battery. And software-wise, I've mentioned, Origin OS is, is great and it seems to be efficient as well. Now we need to talk about cameras. Very similar when it comes to specs on the cameras here. Both have triple lenses. Both have 50 megapixel mains and 50 megapixel ultrawides. However, the X Fold 3 has a 50 megapixel 2x telephoto and the V2 has a 20 megapixel 2.5x telephoto. However, we all know that Vivo have some of the best photography devices out there. And that's due to the hardware, but a lot of it's due to that software and processing when it comes to the photos and videos. And for my money, nine times out of 10, I prefer the outputs on the X Fold 3. That even includes the zoom lens. Here you can see here, while this is only a two times optical, gone all the way from ultra wide to max zoom, that's pretty damn impressive for a two times optical. Whereas on the V2, from ultra wide to max zoom, that's not great. Now, while the ultra-wide and main photos are good on both 
there are certainly some occasions where the Vivo is great. Portrait modes, especially Vivo, constantly get this right. And then I talked about already, but included in the camera, you have to talk about the app itself. The camera app on the Honor feels like something you've designed for a 12 year old, whereas the Vivo has every feature going, you can get as geeky into the specs and pro mode as you like. And I, I, I praise Vivo all the time for this. They're just, yeah, killing it. They're very close to number one in terms of cameras, uh, in my opinion, globally. And as far as video recording, again, the Vivo has better outputs, but the V2 is not bad. And something you get on the Vivo is 8K recording. You only get 4K on the V2. 8K is not something I use, but I would still go for the X Fold 3 anyway because it's better stabilization, colors, zooming in during video as well is much smoother than when zooming in on the V2. I want to say though, the V2 is still one of my favorite phones and camera wise it is good. It's just nearly a year old and with the latest sensors and better apertures than these lenses on the X Fold 3, it just edges it. So that's, as you can tell, a point for Vivo. Into the final round where we have to talk about price. And for this round, it would only be right and fair for me to use the global version price compared to the Vivo X Fold 3 Chinese version price. A, because I've used a global comparison in the software, and B, because the X Fold 3 will never get a global release. So price-wise, absolute whitewash for the X Fold 3. You can get this, this X Fold 3, not my one, because it's not for sale, but this X Fold 3 for £990. But keep in mind, this X Fold 3 is a half a terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can get a 12 gig, 256 gigabytes of RAM for £924. Absolutely mind blowing how cheap that is when you consider everything I've just talked about. The software, the cameras, the build quality, the design. All for under a thousand pounds. All for under the price of the Honor Magic 6 Pro candy bar phone. Yeah. And on the V2 side, retail price for that device, £1,699. Yes. A mere £700 to £750 more expensive than the X Fold 3. Now, don't get me wrong, with the V2, you will find coupons online to get two, sometimes £300 off. You will also have a warranty attached to that that is maybe better than the warranty from Wanda. However, the warranty from Wanda, knowing from a channel member who did have a screen issue with his V2, he sent it away to Wanda, who then got it replaced and fixed by Honor, they then sent it back to him from Wanda. Anyway, the whole process took less than three weeks, I believe. Gear, if you're listening, please pop in the comments how long it actually took. I think it was less than three weeks. And it cost him the cost of shipping to one week. I think it cost him like 40 bucks. So warranty-wise, Wanda and Honor themselves, there's really no difference. They're all going to the same place to get fixed. So you, price-wise, have to decide. Is it worth an extra £700 to have a global version versus a Chinese version? I know my answer, and that's why the X Fold 3 gets the point. I have never, to date, seen such a good value foldable phone. I never thought we'd get, or certainly not as quick as this, get to the point where a device like this, this, this for under a thousand pounds. Never thought we'd get there and we have. 
So, Vivo, well done you. Absolutely unbelievable. In my opinion, you have crushed the Honor Magic V2. So to answer your question in the comments, and hopefully this is quite conclusive, which is better, the Honor Magic V2 or the Vivo X Fold 3? So, if you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button, share the video, do all that good stuff to help my channel grow to 30,000 subscribers, and I'll be back soon with the camera test I had promised yesterday or the day before. Things have been pretty hectic, but I wanted to get this comparison video out because I know you guys care. So until next time...